George Janko recently sat down with Charlie Kirk, and they talked about a plethora of different things on the podcast. But one of the topics that did arise, and it got a little heated, was the conversation surrounding abortion, specifically where kind of George Janko is at with this, as well as where Charlie is at firmly on this topic. Now, with that being said, we're going to take a deeper look at this. And at the end of this video, I want to turn to some Bible verses that really back why we should be pro-life. Now, with that being said, let's see how this conversation came to be. You're going to talk about the abortion aspect of things. I'm, I'm happy to talk about abortion. I'm okay, let's to. talk about that. Um, this is a tough conversation. I, how I see things is I think that pro-life, I, listen, I want every baby that's conceived to see light. Why? Because it wasn't the mom and dad, it was the hand of God that put it together. Amen. Okay. But that being said, as a Christian, I do see people walking around sinning every day and it does not give me the right to walk into their home, grab them by the neck and tell them how Jesus wants them to behave. I see both sides of it. It's my body, it's my choice, but also you can't make me believe in what you're believing. Leaving. We're both fighting for our rights. They're fighting for their bodies. We're fighting for our minds. Do you get what I'm saying here? So where do we meet in the middle? Because I see people that are like, well, what if she's raped or God forbid? What if she's like 11? What if she's sick? In my mind, the first questions I ask is, could there be a like a law that, you know, I mean, we have a car and we have rules and regulations. Could there be for them what they're fighting for? If God forbid the woman was raped or God forbid she is 11 or God forbid she is going to get sick. Is there ways that we could go and have that conversation? Okay, that's, I just wanted to put that out there to let them know that my heart is out there. I want to have that conversation. The other aspect of it that I want to speak about that I don't find it fair is watching men crying outside while the woman has every right to go walk in there and do what's going to permanently change that man's life. I don't understand how that's even fair. So Charlie's about to answer George's questions that he seems to have because we see that George is saying, hey, listen, every baby, I wish and pray that every baby that is in the womb would be born. Uh, he wants that. But George is also saying, can we also make laws for those who may get raped or incest or health issues, et cetera? So George does want to see every baby in the womb born, but he also wants to see some exceptions potentially made. Now, Charlie's going to address this head on. So to be honest, I, the reason I didn't want to speak about this topic is because I'm not educated. No, we, we don't have to if you don't want to. No, I'd like to hear your opinion. I just wanted to yeah, get I out mean, what it, I feel it, on it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I talk about this topic all the time. But yeah, look, so you, can I challenge you a little bit on it? Yeah, is that please, okay? Please, I just, please. As long as you give me your permission. Oh, I don't want to. It's, it's your show. So, so it, should we be able to tell a mom you can't kill your two-year-old? Should we be able to? Absolutely. Okay, then why is it any different if it's in the womb? Um, I, I get, I understand that completely, but the same as I go up to read and say, you should not do drugs because you're harming your temple and God gave you that. God also didn't make me king of everything. Should it be illegal to kill your two year old? I think it should be. Then why should it be illegal to kill your two week old? I think it should be. Okay. Good. No, then we agree. Then no, no, no. I, whoa, whoa. We no, no, agree. No, no, no. I, I know. But then there's, there's no issue. Because the moral dimension doesn't change based on where a human being is, right? Yeah. So we don't change our moral, um, our moral scorecard based on if you're sitting on a couch or if you're sitting in a womb. The, our, our, we, we judge things morally regardless of the location of a human being. So George is making it clear. He's like, hey, listen, whoa, whoa, whoa. We agree. We're not, we're not disagreeing here. But it does seem like, like George is trying to view it more like a, depending on the circumstance of things, can we make it okay depending on the circumstances, specifically surrounding uh, you know, rape and incest. And he's also saying that we can't go around as Christians telling people, this is how you have to do things. And, and that's final. Uh, George is saying, I can't force somebody who isn't a Christian, who doesn't know the Lord to all of a sudden stop doing drugs or not to have an abortion. I can't force that upon somebody, which absolutely, I mean, we can't control people. We can't make them do anything. But the laws that we have in place are good. And we do have laws that tell people you have to wear a seatbelt. You can't do drugs. You can't drink and drive, etc. And so we now have laws in place that say, hey, you can't have an abortion in certain states that voted for that. And keep in mind, that was a vote from the people in those states. Now, 
Charlie's going to go into this a little more as well. I totally, 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 totally understand that. And I just want this to be very, very clear. If I could snap my fingers, there would be no abortions ever again. No, of course. I know your heart. 100%. But, dude, there's like a lot of trauma that we're just steamrolling past. And I think that we've gotten to the conclusion of like, no, they either have to see it from our point of view or it's not even a thing. Yeah, I, I, I saw a girl who's melting down in the college and she's yelling at a guy about the uh, the the pro thing. She's screaming at him, screaming at him like this girl's a lunatic. And then at the very last ending of it, she says, I lo- I had an abortion. And you could tell yeah, that destroyed look, her. We got to be morally clear about this. I could talk about the rape thing at nauseum. I happen to believe it should be illegal in the case of rape. I'm not in the majority of the country. It's a fringe opinion. Trump doesn't share my view. Okay. But if you ask somebody, hey, okay, fine. We'll make it legal for rape, incest, life of the mother, but we'll make it illegal for the other instances. Do you want that? They'll never say yes. Why? Mm-hmm. Because it's now become one of the leading forms of birth control in this country. There oh, are, oh, no, that's not okay. No, but that's what I'm saying is that rape, incest, life, the mother is less than 1% of all the cases. Mm-hmm. Less than 1%. I'm only, I'm only expressing the thing that I'm watching tears in their eyes. I, I, and I, I just want the other side to know that no, we're I, hearing I, I, them. I love your heart and I hear them, right? Mm-hmm. But I also, I hear the silent cries of the baby that wasn't able to be born. I, I agree. And I don't, and we're minimizing it. it. It is dehumanizing language that is no different than yeah. what has happened in the eugenics movement or the Holocaust of how we treat abortion. Now, Charlie's about to cook here with this, but before we watch that clip, guys, George is being very clear here. He, he doesn't stand for abortion. He, he wants to see the life of the child, but he also wants to make it clear we need to be a bit more compassionate towards those who don't share the same views, which I do agree with George here in saying, yes, absolutely, we need to be compassionate, but we still need to stand our ground and be firm on this. And we still need to say, hey, listen, it does not matter the circumstance. That child's life matters. That child deserves life, the chance at life. And so now let's see Charlie Cook in this next clip. Let me just kind of riff on this for a second. Abortion is this thing where we decide to suspend all of their moral rules and guidelines. Mm-hmm. And we say that the moral standards that we have for grown humans or developed humans or let's say adult humans more so than developing humans doesn't matter. For example, we think murder is wrong. We think steal. You, we all agree at this, right? Shouldn't be able to kill your two year old. But if all of a sudden the baby can't be seen and is super small, we're like, oh, actually, the rules don't apply. It's because we have these carve outs because we think it's unique. But what is unique about it? OK, so, yes, it temporarily rarely requires nine, month, mo- nine months of gestational assistance in utero from umbilical cord from the mother. But it has its own DNA, it has its own soul, we believe, and its own heartbeat, own brainwaves, own fingerprints. And so what I'm getting at, though, is that as society, we have said that, hey, we're going to keep on allowing abortion out of narcissism, convenience, and not taking responsibility. And I'm not trying to bash people that have abortions. I feel for you. We should be able to give you recovery and reconciliation. Only through Christ is that possible. But there are two victims when there is an abortion, okay? There is the baby that will never see the light of the day and the damaged mother, both, both of which. And the way you prevent that is you say, we do not want abortions to be able to occur anymore. I understand it's not politically feasible. I understand people like abortion, but I'm going to keep on standing for moral truth, even if it's unpopular. And amen to that. I mean, I myself will continue to stand for moral truth, even though it's unpopular. And I know, listen, George Jenko made it very clear. Listen, he is not for abortion. And there's certain things and aspects where George wants to have some compassion on and and things, certain circumstances where George says, hey, can we make laws and rules about that? But Charlie here in this video, man, makes a very good point. None of that matters. We need to choose life. We need to protect the children in the womb. Because it's been said before, the most dangerous place for a child to be is sadly in the womb of the mother. Now, Before we end this, I did want to go to some beautiful passages in the scriptures that talk about babies in the womb. Job chapter 10 verse 11 says, Clothe me with skin and flesh and knit me together with bones and snooze. Job 33 verse 4 says, The Spirit of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Isaiah 49 verses 15 to 16 say, Can a woman forget her nursing child? and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. 
Your walls are continually before me. Psalm 139 verses 13 to 14 say, For you formed me in my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. And finally, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. These are beautiful reminders of how the Lord views us and sees us in the womb and outside of the womb.